Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 62. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 6.xlsm, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're going to start on the sheet Bell 9x for nine examples of the Bell normal distribution, the normal curve. We're calculating probabilities in x's here. We have 10 amazing examples. All right, uh, here's our first example. In the United States, we have population data, which is approximately bell-shaped. For salaries, U.S. accounting manager average annual salary is 83,000. The standard deviation of the population is 10,000. And we want to figure out what is the probability of getting a job 90,000 or more. Now, this is if we're getting a job in all of, we're searching for jobs anywhere in the United States. All right. All about area, right? We're trying to get the area on the upper end of this curve. We saw how to create these charts in earlier videos. Here we're just going to uh, use them as their gu our guide here. All right, so we'll use the norm.dist function. We can give it our x, our mean, our standard deviation, and this is cumulative. Remember, these functions all go from negative infinity up to the x that we're given and spits out the probabilities, at least the dist ones spit out the probabilities. So I'm going to do comma 1. Well, that's not going to work for us because we asked what's the probability of getting that value or greater. Well, all the area is 1. This is spitting out the area from here to here, so we go 1 minus. So 24% chance that we can get a job uh, greater than $90,000 or greater. Now what about in the Seattle area? The numbers are a little bit different. Average annual accounting manager salary is 91,300 with a standard deviation of 10,500. And the question we're going to ask here is what's the probability of getting a job with a salary of $75,000 or less? All right, so that's this side. That makes it a little bit easier. We don't have to do 1 minus, because by default, it goes from negative infinity up to our x. We're going to dump this x into our norm.dist, our x, comma, mean, standard deviation, cumulative 1. Now remember, cumulative always goes from the zeros for plotting our chart height. All right, there's a six, about a 6% chance in the Seattle area that if 6% uh, well, ch chance that we'll get a job for $75,000 or less. All right, let's look at an Oakland, California example. 94,500 is the mean, 11,000 is standard deviation, and we want to do between. What's the probability of getting between 80,000 and 100,000? So this is our area chart, right? So we're talking about area between. If you're talking straight logic, then the x sits between and has to be greater than or equal to the lower end and less than or equal to the upper end. Both things have to be true um, to get a probability here. Now, in terms of our functions, since they always go from negative infinity up to some point, we're going to take the probability from the bigger, which is the bigger probability, and subtract from it the probability cumulative of the smaller. So we're going to do it here, equals norm. The bigger one first, the x, the 100,000. Our mean, our standard deviation, cumulative 1. Subtract from it. And the x here in the second one is going to be the smaller, comma, mean, standard deviation, cumulative 1. All right, and so what is the probability of getting a job in Oakland, California between eighty and $100,000 for a county manager? Looks like about 60% chance. All right, there's three examples with salary. Let's look at a slightly different example here. Alt-WG zooms into just what we're, the selection there. Now, frozen corn bag filling machine. So the machine is filling bags of frozen corn. Weights follow a normal distribution. The mean weight of the package is 16 ounces. The standard deviation for the population is 0.3 ounces. And our question, we have a z here, 1.96. And we want to calculate the probability of getting between plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations. Now, this is mislabeled here. 
this relates to this. So actually this right here is going to actually be the answer to this question. Why don't I put this right here? All right, so we want to calculate the probability of getting between one point, uh, plus or minus 1.96. Well, we can go straight from a Z and calculate probability. But remember, it's always cumulative. Now, I don't have a picture for this one, but ours is this. We need between. We have the Z, right? Well, here's the middle, Z equals 0. Anything above is positive anything below is negative. So we can use the same number once as a positive and once as a negative, right? Put at, Say, what's the probability of m uh, negative infinity to 1.96? That's the bigger one, minus the probability of negative infinity up to the minus 1.96. Subtract those two, and we'll get our answer. So you ready? Equals norm. And the s ones, s dist and s inverse, s dist is what we're going to use. The s means standard normal. That means we're dealing with z's instead of x's. So now what's our z? This is the bigger one, comma, and I'm going to do cumulative 1. Now remember, this function is different in earlier versions of Excel. They had the norm s dist, but it didn't have this second argument. All right, that's the bigger area minus. the smaller area. Oh, our z minus 1.96 comma 1. And there's our probability. I'm going to decrease the decimals just a bit here on the home ribbon. Okay, so we asked the question, what's the probability of getting plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations? 95%. Now, let's calculate the lower and upper. And then we can certainly, once we have the lower and uppers, calculate the standard deviation a different way. All right, so what's the upper? Well, we got to take our mean. I'm sorry, we'll do the lower first. So we got to take our mean and subtract our standard deviation. We don't want just one. We want how many? 9.96, so we multiply. Now let's do the upper. Equals, well, our mean plus some standard deviations. There's the standard deviation. And how many? Whatever it is in that cell. All right, so there's the upper and the lower. We certainly can do our norm dot dist function and do which one? The smaller or the bigger? We always take the bigger area for the, the area or probability associated with the bigger x, or z as we did up here. We need our standard deviation, our mean, our standard deviation, cumulative 1, minus, and then the same thing again, but for the lower, comma. And how about the mean and the standard deviation, and then the 1 for the cumulative? All right, so that, we can certainly do that if we have our upper and lower bounds there. Now, these are not different. Of course, that's only number formatting. When we do that, it simply hides the decimals. Those decimals are still in the cell. Now, what about the probability of not getting between plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations? Uh, we'll see this later in confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. The probability of not will be called alpha. So in our case, we already have it, so we say 1 minus. And you could, uh, if you did it all in one formula, notice this we already did up here, right? That's a 95. And since they're subtracting, you'd have to put parentheses around it and then take 1 minus. All right, um, one line, oh, a couple. Three more examples, cool examples. Uh, Nielsen reports, mean daily TV watch per household is 8.4 hours. That's a lot of TV. That means on average per household. It's not individual. I mean, it, it is the whole household. So maybe dad, mom, and the kids are each watching two or three hours each. But that's a lot of hours for the TV to be on in each house. Um, and then here's our standard deviation, right? Let's calculate probability that hours watched are greater than or equal to 10. It's got to be a small number. Not, people can't be watching more than 10 hours, right? Hey, how about we do our, well, this is on the upper end, right? 
So the functions work cumulatively, so if we want something on the upper, 1 minus. I use my norm disk. There's our x10, our mean, our standard deviation, and 1 for cumulative. Oh my heavens, 20, about 1 in 4 people, 25% watch more than 10 hours per day. That's just amazing. I mean, especially if people are working, right? Maybe they just leave the TV on at night while they're sleeping or something. That's that's a lot of. Now let's figure out um, this one here. Let's do the low end. What's the probability of x less than one, which means hours watched less than one, which means um, let's calculate that one or fewer hours. Now, what's nice about the low end, this is calculating the probability on the low end, is we just throw our x in. And it's cumulative up to that point, so this will work just fine. Our mean, our standard deviation, and cumulative. Wow, that's amazing. Let's look at that, 0 0.001. The probability is incredibly small that people are watching less than one, one or fewer hours. Let's add a percentage format. Oops, control Z, I had the wrong cell highlight. Percentage format, and that's just formatting. I'm going to increase the decimals. All right. So if we were round it like uh, two tenths of a percent of the households watch one or fewer hours, that's stunning. You'd think that that would be a lot higher. All right, now what about number of hours watched per day in the lowest 1%? The actual number of hours, and we want 1%. This is less than 1%, right? We want 1%. Well, this is a situation where we have the probability, and we want to get the x, the number of hours watched. So we can use our inverse functions. There's no gnome. The norm inverse. We give it a probability, and this is on the lower end. So all we have to do is put in our 1%, comma, our mean, our standard deviation, and we have it. Wow. 2.5 hours. So to be in the bottom 1%, the hurdle point, the marking point, is two, about 2.6 hours. So if you think you're, you know, watching about 2.6 hours, you're still, that's, you think that's a lot? No, it's not. Only 1% or fewer of the household, 1% of the fewer of the households watch that uh, amount of TV. All right, so in this video, we saw 10 amazing examples of the normal or bell-shaped distribution. We started with uh, population mean and standard deviation, and then we calculated a bunch of probabilities and a few x's along the way. All right, uh, our next video, we'll talk about the last distribution of Chapter 6, the exponential distribution. See you next video.